I'm Shana, I'm one of the vulture keepers here at the zoo and today we're going to be feeding our vultures and I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about them. So here at Vulture Valley we have seven individuals in this aviary so I'll introduce you to a couple of our big characters. Um, so at the minute feeding, this is Jekyll, um, he's really easy to tell apart as they all have their own identification rings. So his is AK. Uh, all the boys, they have blue rings and all the girls have red rings. Apart from the second vulture who's already down feeding, as you might be able to see, he doesn't have an identification ring at all. Uh, but that is absolutely fine for us because he's actually one of the biggest characters in our aviary. Uh, his name is Akobi. And the reason he's such a big character to all of his keepers is because he was actually hand reared. So he's really friendly to us when we go in there cleaning, he'll follow us around uh, and get up to all sorts of mischief. These vultures are the Rappel's griffin vulture. Um, so they're actually an um, African species of vulture. Uh, and when they are feeding on a carcass, you'll find not just this particular species, you'll find lots of different vultures and also other scavenging species. Things like your African kites, also jackals as well, marabou stalks, they'll all come and feed on the same carcass. But generally it's the vultures that spot that carcass and they are the telltale sign that there is food available on the floor. Vultures have amazing eyesight, so what they'll do is they'll circle around in the sky looking for their next meal. And they only eat dead things, so they are a scavenging species. So they'll circle around nice and high up in the sky looking out for any potential meal. If they spot a potential meal, they don't just land straight away and start tucking in because the things that they're going to be eating could be things like um, dead elephants or lions. They need to know it's definitely passed on before they start taking chunks out of it. So what they'll do is they'll actually fly quite low down to the um, particular potential meal and they'll actually brush it with their wingtips. Uh, now if the uh, potential meal then starts to get up and walk away, then they know that it's not ready to eat. However, if it doesn't, then one of the brave vultures will then land on the floor. But they'll land to the back end of that particular animal and they'll give it a bit of a nibble on the bottom. Uh, now if it gets up, then me your meal is definitely not ready. Um, however, if it doesn't, you know, you can start tucking in. And for vultures, uh, they actually go into the softest areas of that carcass. So things like the eyes, the nose, all nice and soft places for them to start eating. And there are also a couple of holes underneath the tail in which they can start tucking into their meal as well. As you can see while our vultures are eating, it's all about that beak. Because they've got quite a sharp beak, but those feet don't really have much power to them. Uh, because they don't kill their food, they don't have to have sharp uh, feet. So it's all in the power in the beak to rip that flesh away from bone. Now what Zendira is showing you right now is that lovely large wingspan. That wingspan can get up to around about eight feet, um, so really, really impressive. And the Rappel's griffin vulture, which are these particular species, are actually our highest recorded flying bird. The highest recorded flight of a Rappel's griffin vulture is actually 37,000 feet. And the only reason we know this is because it actually unfortunately collided with an aeroplane. sitting our vultures can actually consume around 10% of their own body weight and these guys actually weigh in around about seven kilos so that's really really impressive however they do actually have quite a unique defense mechanism after they've eaten if they do need to escape any predators that may be on their way because if you've consumed around 10% of your body weight that means you are going to be pretty hefty so if you do need to take off and get up into the skies quite quickly then you need to lose a lot of that weight pretty quickly. So vultures, they have their own um, unique way of uh, solving this problem, and that is actually to vomit up the contents of their crop pretty quickly to reduce their weight to be able to get into the skies quickly if there are any larger predators on their way. Now for the reason for 
this perhaps ugly appearance, as some may say, is actually because they are well designed for their job out there in the wild. So they are what we call nature's dustbin men. So they go around clearing the savannas of all those dead, decaying carcasses, which is actually really important because without this, you'll have lots of carcasses laying around that will actually spread diseases. So really, really important that they actually clear up these carcasses. And so because this is their job uh, out there in uh, the wild, they are well designed for this. So that bald head and neck actually helps them to keep themselves clean, believe it or not. Uh, so there's no feathers on the head whatsoever. So when they're sticking their head into carcasses, they know that they're not going to get too dirty. Uh, you might also notice that they have that white ruffle of feathers at the base of their neck. Uh, now this is there for a couple of different reasons. So they actually will use this as a depth gauge. So they know that they can't stick their head in a carcass any further than this, otherwise they might get their body stuck. But it also acts as their very own inbuilt hoodie. Uh, so for this, it means that so they can tuck their bald head and neck into those ruffle of feathers at night time when the temperatures do drop in Africa, and it actually keeps them nice and warm as well. So what our vultures are eating at the moment is actually a bone from horse. So they get horse meat on a regular basis. And the reason we feed out horse to a lot of our carnivorous animals is because it is a very lean meat, which means that they can consume more of it than if we were feeding out a more fattier food. But also there is a lot more of it available to go into their food chain than there is of other food items, things like beef, uh, which we regularly, regularly eat. Uh, and also we do like to feed them on the bone as well. So they have a lot of meat um, on that bone there and that really helps to file that beak down as well. Um, so as you can see, it's got a lovely point to it. And if they're feeding consistently off uh, bone, as they would in the wild on those carcasses that they'd be finding, it really does help to file down um, and keep that beak in a nice condition. So uh, at the minute here at Vulture Valley is actually breeding season for our repels Griffin vultures. And we're really, really lucky that we actually have a chick in one of our caves. And so proud parents are Morticia and Jekyll, and they've been doing really, really well feeding the chick, and it is growing at quite a rapid rate. It started off as a white fluff ball, but it's now starting to get all those feathers coming through. And they're feeding out on a regular basis. It's starting to move around the nest as well now. So hopefully in the next month or so, we might be seeing it at the edge of the cave and then potentially starting to fledge in our aviary, which is really great news because these vultures are actually um, critically endangered. So really important that we're boosting numbers here in captivity.